I'm sure you've heard the story of We Spa. A woman filmed the video complaining that a man had exposed himself to children and that people were upset and uncomfortable. The man working at the spa said that they can't discriminate on the basis of gender identity, so there's nothing they can do. That's the law in California. Well, on the left, mainstream media, they said it was a hoax, it was a lie. Antifa showed up and began beating people who protested. This country is sick, my friends. It turns out now it wasn't a hoax. It wasn't a lie. It was true. The individual who exposed themselves to the children and other women has been charged with several felony counts of indecent exposure, I believe. I will, we'll, we'll get into all the nitty gritty on the charges, but they have been charged. They're now claiming it's transgender harassment. But this person apparently has a previous record. Now, before we get into this story, I want to point something out as to why this segment's so important. I'm not a conservative. It is not a conservative position to say offenders should not expose themselves to kids. But this country is sick, and this is evidence of it. Why I've been tweeting about pro-choice and traditionally liberal and socially liberal values. But the issue is, if you take a look at this chart they, they put together of economic positions versus social positions, conservative uh, Trump supporters were diverse. Among Trump supporters, they were mostly not woke and economically left and right. But the Democratic Party, the vote, those who voted for Hillary Clinton, were overwhelmingly, this is 2016, mind you, overwhelmingly in the economic left and socially left category. What this means, there is a truth to what happened. An individual was angry that a biological male had exposed themselves to children in violation of almost every single social norm people expect, believe in, desire, demand. Now, there is a large faction of individuals who believe that there should be no gender segregation, as they call it. That's why when this woman filmed what happened with the indecent exposure, a man walks up to her and says, it was a trans person, you know, you're being bigoted. And the woman filming says, no, it wasn't. And as it turns out, it was an offender. We'll, get, we'll, we'll break through the story. When I come out and say the mainstream media is lying to you, and they are, they'll say that's a conservative position. When I come out and say this story is false, they'll say, ah, but Tim doesn't criticize conservatives. Well, you know what the issue is? Conservatives have different values than I do in some regards, and I argue with them. And we had a big argument on religion on Timcast IRL with, you know, Sidney Watson, Elijah Schaefer, Ian, me, Lydia. It was, it was a, I thought it was an amazing uh, conversation. We disagree, but we're not lying to each other. We might be wrong, but we're not lying to each other. Oh, there are conservatives who lie. There are conservatives who are stupid. But if my issue with someone is that we fundamentally disagree on a value, uh, on, on a policy or value issue, as long as we're having a conversation, I can say, we need to find a compromise. We need to find a way to live together. But when the issue is that the left is lying to your face and empowering offenders who abuse children, and I say, how are you, how are you making these assertions? They'll say, you're right wing. It's the only explanation. So then they say, but Tim talks about how he wants universal health care and how he supported Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang. And that doesn't change anything because he opposes the machine. That's what it's really about. Do you support the cult? So right now, I guess it is true. <clears throat> There's a left and a right in this country. If you define left and right as either you are a blind ignoramus who believes whatever you're told, then I guess that's the left. If that's how you want to define it. If you are a discerning individual who challenges the news as presented, then I suppose you are on, you are on the right and you are right. No, like right. Like you're right. You're correct. Let me read you the story. And then I want to show you what the media does and why this country is broken and sick. From the New York Post, offending suspect claims transgender harassment in We Spa case. In June, a group of women complained that a person who identified as a female exposed their privates at the Wee Spa in Los Angeles. The incident led to months of sometimes violent protests, with media outlets declaring an example of bias against the transgendered, or even that it didn't happen. Slate said it was a transphobic hoax. But on Monday, charges of indecent exposure were discreetly filed against a serial offender for the Wee Spa incident following an investigation by the LAPD. Mind you, Andy No reporting. Excellent work, Andy. Sources with knowledge of the case, but not authorized to speak publicly, say four women and a minor came forward to allege that Darren Aji Marager 
was partially, wow, we'll just say excited because I keep this family friendly, was excited in the woman's section of We Spa. Besides being a suspect in this case, Marriager is facing multiple felony charges of indecent exposure over a separate incident in L.A. Marriager, who spoke exclusively to the Post, denies the allegation and says that she is actually the victim of transphobic harassment. <clears throat> On June 23, several women confronted staff at the Wee Spa in L.A., Koreatown, over accusations that a person exposed their male privates in the women's section. Video of the interaction was posted the following day on Instagram by a woman using the name Cubana Angel. Quote, it's OK for a man to go into a women's section, show his, you know, around the other woman, young little girls underage in your spa. She asked the staff, he's a man, he's a man. The three and a half minute video was reposted across social media and promptly went viral. Cubana Angel spoke at a press conference on July 7th in Pasadena next to her attorney. As I was walking, I noticed something that was really disturbing, something that caused me to feel that I was transported into the men's locker room, the woman said. She said some women and girls were uncomfortable and began putting their robes back on. She complained to staff where the video was recorded, but they legally could not do anything because of California law. We as women have rights to be safe in public spaces, and they are being violated by men, she said. Now, I just want to pause and just say this. Just because it's the law doesn't mean it's right. Now, in this regard, you got a very serious challenge. The spa said we won't do anything because it's the law. That's not true. The law is you can't discriminate. But when you see an individual and you make a, 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 when you can discern this individual is not genuine, then you can act. In fact, dare I say, offenders like this make it harder for trans people to actually get those rights. There's a meme and it shows a very effeminate wearing female clothes with, you know, breasts and everything walking into the men's room. And it says the future conservatives want. And I'm like, it's actually a good point, right? There are issues we need to contend with as, it, as we deal with trans people and ensuring that they have safe spaces and, you know, are being fairly treated. But there are very difficult questions that must be answered. When you have a clear case as a spa owner of someone who is clearly violating what the law, the spirit of the law, then you should intervene and say you are ruining the actual, uh, like the, the actual spirit of what we're trying to do with this. This person's a serial offender. Now, I'm not going to pretend to be the arbiter of morality. So I don't know. I'll tell you this. People should stand up, speak up and say no when they are being told to to apply fascistic uh, 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 decrees or things like that. They're going to say the video was followed by weeks of sometimes violent face offs between right wing and evangelical Christian protesters at the Wee Spa and Antifa and far left counter protesters. On July 3rd, after police formed a line to separate the two groups, 40 people were arrested. The LAPD so far have confirmed few details about the Wee Spa incident. Inquiries sent to the department were responded with statements saying the investigation is ongoing. Then, this week, a warrant was issued in LA County for the arrest of 52-year-old Darren Marriger of Riverside, California, based on five felony counts of indecent exposure in connection with the Wee Spa incident. As of publication, Marriger has not been arrested. Everything about the Wee Spa was a bunch of garbage and lies, Marriger said in an interview. She says she is legally female in California and was in a jacuzzi in the women's section when she was accosted by Cubana Angel. She never saw me naked. I was underwater with the water all the way up to my chest. Marriager denies ever being excited around children at the spa. She says she is actually the victim of harassment by transphobic women at the spa. And therein lies a very big problem. There are multiple witnesses who have come forward on the side of Cubana Angel, in which case, Marriager is innocent until proven guilty, but you can see the problem. People are not, the, the, these ideas that are being put forward and these laws that are being put in place, I'm sorry, but most people don't agree with them. Whether it's right or wrong, whether you think it's morally right or wrong, the people are saying no, and they're challenging it. And I think there's what, five uh, plaintiffs in this case or, or, or witnesses, I should say. They say, law enforcement sources revealed Marriager is a tier one registered offender with two prior convictions of a decent exposure stemming from, from incidents in 2002 and 2003 in California. She declined to comment on the convictions, and that's a reference to Marriager. In 2008, she was convicted for failing to register as an offender. You see where this goes? It goes way, way, way back. It says to me that Cubana Angel is not the bad guy here, but the victim. 
a law passed by California Democrats that went into effect this year replaced the state's lifetime registration requirement with a tiered system. The law allows lower tiered offenders to petition to be removed from the list. However, Marriger is not eligible to do ongoing criminal charges. She also has a long criminal history in California that includes nearly a dozen felony convictions for crimes ranging from offenses and burglary and escape. You know, keep it friendly. So we'll call them adult. Trying to keep things family friendly as best as I can. Not like I want your kids to watch this stuff. In addition to Marriger's new felony charges over indecent exposure, she is also facing six felony counts of indecent exposure over a separate locker room incident in December 2018. L.A. County prosecutors accused Marriger of indecent exposure to women and children in a changing area at a swimming pool in West Hollywood Park. Marriger claims to identify as female so she can access women's locker rooms and showers, reads an internal flyer by the L.A. County Sheriff's Department that was sent to law enforcement departments in Southern California in late 2018. Marriger has pleaded not guilty to all six counts, and her next court date for the incident is on September 8th. Marriger told law enforcement she's transient, but bail was set at $150,000 in early 2019, which was paid. Marriger says her open cases involving accusations of indecent exposure show a pattern of abuse from a state and society that punishes transgender people. You allow transgender women to go in there, and then people simply claim indecent exposure and you're arrested. But 2002? 2003? Marriger says she is speaking with progressive California lawmakers, like State Senator Scott Weiner, in the hope that they change state law to better protect trans people. Quote, if you go into an area where you're expected to be nude, there has to be an indecent exposure exemption, she says. Marriger says she may file complaints or lawsuits for the discrimination. She says she has been made to suffer by law enforcement and women in the Wii, in, in the Wii Spa. She says she has been in contact with the L.A. County District Attorney since learning of the warrant and plans to turn herself in. What did the media say about all of this? Let me show you... Uh, let me show you some of this. LAPD under scrutiny for excessive force and we spa confrontation. We spa. Look at this. We've got cops. We spa protest. Demonstrators file claim against city of LA alleging excessive force by police. Proud boys and QAnon expose dangerous hatred of trans people at we spa. It goes on and on and on. On and on and on. So it turns out this individual going back almost 20 years ago, is a registered offender who has done similar things in the past. The police believe this person is only feigning being transgender to gain access. Maybe that's not true. Maybe this person has been trans the whole time and just protested by going in and demanding this space for trans people. I'm sure that's what a lot of the activists will say. But I'm not, I'm not sure that's relevant in the long run. The point is, whether you think there should be gender segregation or not, right now the people do. And there is really interesting questions about this, because this goes to show you that the issue isn't necessarily segregation. It's something else. You know, back in the day, we had very similar cases pertaining to race in the civil rights movement. They said we should not have, you know, mixed race things or whatever. And I think they were wrong. I think the reason they were wrong is that what the differences between race are, for the most part, only skin deep. And I say for the most part because I recognize that some people are taller or shorter, have different kinds of hair, colored eyes, but it's mostly just skin deep. If people are going to share spaces, I don't see why we segregate on the basis of race, religion, national origin. That makes no sense to me. But I understand the biological differences of biological sex, and I understand why these traditions and norms exist. And the challenge is right now, I mean, how do you deal with uh, uh, the anger, the outrage, the fear? Um, and the, the, the law as it stands. There are many people, and, and I'll try to break this down because this is a, this is, this is a, these are challenging more questions. The left would say segregation was wrong when it came to race, and it's wrong when it comes to gender. People should be allowed to freely occupy, occupy spaces without discrimination. And this is getting us into the transhumanist argument where people say, your body is not what makes you you, your soul, your internal self is what makes you you, and we should not discriminate against people for anything. You know, you should be allowed to use facilities that are in the public. And that's actually fairly interesting because based on a lot of the arguments we heard about segregation in the past, it would apply here. Just because you have women who are offended that a man is coming in or a trans woman, depending on the circumstance, doesn't mean they have a right to demand segregation. Back during racial segregation, you had white women outraged that black women or men would be coming into their areas and say that shouldn't be allowed. There's segregation. But segregation based on race was wrong. In the end, I think it's fairly simple. Right now, where we're at as a society, there is an obvious limitation to uh, 
national origin, race, and gender in many respects, but there are still differences. There's a challenge here. I, I can only say it is, is that much. It's, it's that much. But so long as men tend to be larger, so long, I'm sorry, so long as males tend to be larger, tend to have more muscle mass, tend to have more collagen. I think they actually have double the collagen, stronger bones, etc. There's a reason why we create a safe space because biological sex is, it exists. And there are biological distinctions. And muscle mass, bone density, center of gravity, all of these things play a role in physical capabilities. So we say for this reason, it's why it's different when it comes to race. Now, some people might argue, but Tim, some people based on race are shorter or whatever. And it's like, yeah, well, there's there's uh, exceptions, there's rules. And I think for the most part in the United States, the differences between races are, are much substantially more minuscule. And although there may be some people who are bigger or taller, I don't know if we if, if, if that if that if it makes sense to play that game. What, I, what I'm trying to get at is sometimes we might say, Segregation is wrong, and here's the reason why. And if we try to deconstruct it to a great extent, you'll find people poking holes in your argument in an attempt to say what you're saying isn't truly right or wrong. And that's, admittedly, there's, the, you know, we're, we're dealing with analog versus digital. We're dealing with waveforms versus, you know, particle forms. We're dealing with, can we quantify the exact moment we've decided why this is wrong and why it's wrong, or do we know it when we see it? I don't have all the answers. I really don't. I just think for the most part, people uh, who, who are men, people who are, uh, who are male, people who are female have biological, biological differences, and people who are female have requested safe spaces. But there is a, this, this ideological divide, and one side is going to win. And I got to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if it's the left on this one because of the arguments that already exist against racial segregation and uh, segregation based on any other issue. When they said you can't discriminate on the basis of you know, race, national origin, gender, etc. When they had the ruling of Plessy versus Ferguson, when they said separate but equal, that same principle is still applied to men and women, to males and females, that the courts have basically said it is discrimination if you have a bathroom and don't let women in. It is discrimination if you have a bathroom and don't let men in. But it is not discrimination when you have a bathroom for men and a bathroom for women, and they're both able to use the bathroom. The problem there is that's the argument they use for segregation, racial segregation. So you tell me how you nav navigate this one. And I tell you, it is, well, it's difficult because there are, there are many differences that, well, maybe the issue I suppose isn't necessarily uh, race isn't the same as biological sex. I think that's probably the easiest way to put it. It's a very difficult conversation. I can say that 50 billion times, but race is kind of a collection of genetic uh, genetics that result in, for the most part, outward appearance and certain characteristics like height or, or otherwise. You know, I went to Scandinavia. Everyone was taller than me. I went to Thailand. Everyone was shorter than me because genetics play a role in people's development in their lives. But there could, there's a lot of people who are, you know, Asian, who are very tall, very short. And so we decided, you know, we're not going to the, the, the differences between race aren't as pronounced. We don't think it's right to do this. Between men and women, there are exceptions to the rule. But for the most part, if you say everybody who's a man, uh, everyone, you know, tell a room to line up from tallest to shortest, and it'll be mostly the men followed by mostly women being shorter. I, I would just say it's, 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 there are more pronounced biological differences between men and women. But I will also contend the argument simply that separate but equal among genders is, the, is, 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 is acceptable I think you're going to run into very serious problems with that argument because we want to stand on what the law says and what the principle is about segregation. I think there's a very, very, very easy solution to this. Family and individual changing rooms and showers. Done. Problem solved. How about this? Instead of having a big locker room where there's a bunch of different showers, you have a bunch of individual stalls. So it's the same exact room, but there are doors on the stalls. And so an individual can walk in, open the door, lock it behind them, and then go about their business in private. This, I believe, would protect trans people. It would protect biological males, biological females. And I don't see what the problem is. In fact, that's what many places have done. Problem solved. You know what? I'm not a fan of big open bathing areas anyway. How about that? Now, I suppose the challenge is when you're dealing with a spa and you have lots of people moving about naked. And the only solution, I suppose, to all of this is that don't let people walk around naked anymore. And you get, you get a challenge. Either... We say you can't discriminate on the basis of sex, or you can, and then you tell me how we solve that problem. I get it. Traditionalists, conservatives will say we simply separate males and females. All right. Progressives will say you can't do that. That's wrong. Okay. So what do you do? 
I don't know. I really, really don't. And that's why I think this country is headed down a dark path because these divides can't be mended. Already, I know there's going to be people commenting saying, Tim, you're wrong. It's evil. It's terrible. There's going there's to be people saying, Tim, you're wrong. You're evil. You're terrible. You're transphobic and all of that stuff. And my goal is simply to make sure we can live together, live together peacefully, peaceably and, and prog- like progress and pursue happiness and all of those things. How we do that, I don't know. I can say one very, very important thing, though. It appears that this individual in the initial case of We Spa is a known serial repeat offender registered. This is not the case of a trans person in good or or, or earnest, you know, wanting to be left alone, just going to a spa. This is the case of an individual who, according to the police, does this specifically to expose themselves. Multiple witnesses saying the individual was excited, if you know what I mean. So we need to make sure that when we're talking about the nuance in segregation, we're talking about the nuance in these cases as well. Is this person truly a trans person being discriminated against? Or is this an offender exploiting the system for gain like many conservatives complained about and warned about in the first place? Because the left refused to acknowledge the reality of this, calling it fear mongering. What is it? L.A. Times fear mongering about sports conceals discrimination against the trans community. And of course, they go on to talk about the We Spa. Actually, let me pull this one up. They say in June, a woman at a woman at the We Spa in L.A. recorded her reaction and berated the staff after she claimed she had she had seen a man go into the women's section, exposing himself. Protesters clashed in the streets. Two people were stabbed and conservative pundits wrung their hands over the prospect of women and children being preyed upon by men who could pose as transgender women. How many times have we heard this harmful and baseless trope? And there it is. Baseless, harmful. That turned out to be true. This country is sick and it's broken. I'm not going to pretend to have all the answers. We are entering this this era where if we follow through on the anti-discrimination laws, then we have to uphold them the same as we would for uh, uh, any person. I think back to Frederick Douglass. He had a, he has this great quote where he challenged Americans to live by the words they themselves had written, that all men are, are created equal. And that was his argument against slavery. Do you actually believe that? Or is it just for you? And he was proven right. No, it's for everybody. So when we write you, that, that there, you, you cannot discriminate on the basis of these characteristics of which we include sex, then how do we still have Men, men's rooms and women's rooms, because society didn't want to let that one go. They, they didn't want to say, OK, no, because even even the racial racial justice activists were like, OK, that one we understand with and OK with. But as times change and a growing faction says we we don't want this anymore. I think it's fair to say the younger generation will continue to embrace this and you will probably end up with just straight up unisex bathrooms moving forward, which is why I say maybe the solution is you have the same locker room. But instead of like just open showers, you put up walls with doors. It really is that simple, isn't it? I don't have all the answers, my friends. I really, really don't. Just some things to think about. Let me know what your thoughts based on what I was saying. And I'll see you on the next segment coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you then.